right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Champion Spotlight. I am your host, Dr. Megan Brown, owner of Body Mechanics Physical Therapy and the creator of the Raise Your Game program. That is a physical, mental, nutritional, and goal-setting program that helps you become a champion in life. And as always, we have another champion in life. We have Taylor Cummings with us. So Taylor, she is a USA Women's Lacrosse team member. She's also a Maryland LAX alumni, three-time Tawarton winner, which has is unheard of. No one's ever done before. Um, she's also an Under Armour athlete and founder of the Taylor Cummings Lacrosse. So Taylor, thank you so much for being here today. How you doing? Thanks for having me. I'm great. I'm excited to be here. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. Just, you know, trying to stay cool in the Florida heat. <laughs> I'm sure. You guys, I'm sure you guys are feeling stuff in, in Maryland too. Yeah, it's been brutal. It's been like 100 degrees, so it's pretty yeah. normal for you guys, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So I just wanted to, you know, take the time today to talk a little bit with you and, um, you know, highlight some of the awesome stuff that you're doing in the community, not only with lacrosse, but, you know, on the global scale of things today, too. So can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing these days? Yeah, so life looks a little different than it normally does this time of year, just given COVID and what's going on. But uh, right now, I am a, I'm still playing, so technically we don't have a season for US or WPLL, but I'm still um, I'm still able to play at age 26, which is great. I graduated four years ago, so to still be able to have, put a stick in my head and compete, um, you know, in a competitive level is awesome. Um, I run my own business, doing camps and clinics all over the country. Haven't done that in a while, just because of COVID limitations, but. Still being able to do some local lessons um, where I can. Um, you know, I'm also a coach and a teacher at McDonough, which is where I went to high school. So being able to kind of work with kids both on a lacrosse field and in a classroom um, has been really rewarding. And, you know, some of the best coaches I had were also some of my teachers at McDonough. So I hope to be able to kind of create that relationship uh, with my middle schoolers as they move on into high school and play for me eventually. Um, and, you know, on the side, you know, I'm just trying to continue to, to grow the game, but also empower young, young females in particular um, to, to push farther, to dream bigger. You see all these different sporting, sporting sports leagues and um, powerful female actresses and, and congresswomen and pushing for change and pushing, you know, to close the gender gap. And um, I think that's something that for me in particular, you know, is, is something I'm really passionate about. So lacrosse for me has been the vehicle that I've chosen to kind of not only learn a lot of my lessons, but also, you know, help young girls do the same. And um, that's been super rewarding. Yeah. And I think, you know, with, with the platform that you do have and, and now, even though, you know, COVID has kind of changed some stuff for us, you know, like you came down here last summer and did a clinic for us and, you know, but it, it is different having to do it you know, virtual, and you're still trying to connect with everybody, but it's a little bit different. It's a little harder. Um, can yeah. you tell us, can you tell us a little bit about how, you know, with, with the WPLL not being able to play this summer, and, you know, you're probably, you're not able to do stuff with Team USA, but how have you kind of stayed in that mindset of, like, being ready to compete when it's time to go? Yeah, you know, I think for us, we had sort of different, we had WPLL season this summer and then different, we're getting, we're entering into our World Cup year. So we're actually under a year from competing. Um, so that kind of makes the training worth it in our mind. So even though we're, you know, 11 months away, which is a long time in the, you know, in many people's eyes, we've been trying out for four years. So to be 11 yeah. months away, we're like, we're so close. <laughs> this is awesome. So I think for me and for a lot of us as athletes and U.S. players, you know, the uncertainty of when we're coming back is, you know, is unsettling a little bit, but we also are very used to having long gaps in between our training sessions. So now it's just being pushed back a few more months. Um, but for me, I think, you know, what motivates me and what kept me going was my, were my teammates who I knew were, you know, trying to do the same thing and trying to keep pushing themselves. And some of us don't have gym access to gyms. You know, for me, I had access to 30 pounds on bowel and that was it in terms of any lifting I could do. And so we are very, you know, each of us were under different circumstances and still are, but 
you know, I, th my teammates have always been my motivation. And especially during this, when we couldn't physically be on field together, knowing that they were still there training, pushing each other and pushing our, um, our group from miles and miles, sometimes coast away. We have a lot of West coast players and, um, that's been really helpful. So, you know, quarantine, especially like April, May got a little, it was a little, it was getting a little old and, you know, things were, <laughs> things were still closed. And, um, uh, that's when, you know, I really relied on, on the community we had within our team to, to lift, lift me up. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's that, that champion mindset, you know, is like, you guys are literally world champions, you know, and mm -hmm. coming into this 2021, you're going to have to defend your title. And it's, it's, realizing you know as a team even though you guys are apart you're still together you're still going through the same things you're still trying to push each other and you know if for those of you out there that haven't checked out Taylor's stuff yet and all the the USA women's players definitely do that because it is it is extreme motivation and definitely makes you you, you know proud to know that they're representing our country when it comes to lacrosse so thank you for that for sure of course yeah I think you know What's interesting about our U.S. team is we're all still trying out. So in many aspects, you would think that we'd be like competing. We are competing against each other, but you think that that support net wouldn't be there. And I think the reason we've all gotten to this level is because we do put the team first. And, you know, especially we're not competing on field right now, but this is a time where you could be setting yourself apart from one another. But we're really trying to move our group and improve our as a group. And by doing that, we also have to improve individually to help the greater good and to help the group. So it's just an interesting dynamic that, you know, a lot of people don't understand how 25 of the most competitive people can work together and like each other, especially yeah. in a four-year tryout process. <laughs> but it, I think we all know what it's like to not only compete at the highest level and win, but what the best teams we've been a part of are ones that work together and push each other but also have that support net yeah that's awesome so can you uh tell us a little bit about your mission behind you know taylor cummings lacrosse and and with your brand yeah so for me um you know i think first and foremost i always want to be really authentic to to myself and who i am and um you know I'm for I'm kind of grateful I didn't grow up in the age of social media where you know I wasn't 10 years old and had a an iPhone and had supermodels and celebrities on my on my screen but at the same time I didn't have access to you know Jen Adams and and the yeah. people that I and Mia Hamm and the people I looked up to so now that you know we are in this age where you know everyone's so visible and for us US players our visibility is like a step above you know college level um, in terms of, you know, where we were in college. Um, I think for me, you know, my brand, my company is me. My company is who I am. I'm the only employee. And so I just try to be really authentic to who I am and show the highs and show the wins. You know, yesterday I found all five of my championship rings. Like that was awesome. But at the same time, like I try to show the work that goes into it, but also like the low parts of, you know, you're going to get cut. You're going to feel bad about yourself. You're going to make mistakes. And how do we react to that? And I think, you know, even as an adult, I, some of the people I look up to, you know, not necessarily in the lacrosse world, but just in life do a really great job of showing that all encompassing, um, persona and their, their, you know, authentic selves and others don't. And so I'm, I'm an adult. And so I can kind of see that, but I can imagine as a kid, you know, you can't necessarily dissect, you know, what's real and what's not. And um, so for me, knowing I have so many young eyes on me, I try to, to be the person where they can see sort of all aspects and I'm not perfect at it. And it's not easy sometimes. And I screw up sometimes, but I do try to just be as authentic as I can. And I think, you know, you do a great job. And so do a lot of the other women on the national team of kind of showing that balance, you know, like, yes, you're a top level athlete, but you also go through tough days and you also go through, you know, those, those mental challenges as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, on the champions quiz that we have for raise your game, we talk about, you know, being honest with yourself, answering that quiz. And that's the way to, 
to actually figure out, you know, what are your, your weak spots or your blind mm -hmm. spots, you know, things that you can't always see about yourself. But when you take that quiz, you can actually you get that a little assessment and you're like, oh yeah, I do kind of do that. I, I probably mm -hmm. need to look at, you know, my nutrition a little bit more. Um, you know, one of the questions that I ask on there is your overall appearance of self. So it asks you to rate, you know, what is your overall appearance of yourself? And I know that you've had, you know, issues in the past or kind of, you know, uh, stuckness almost about, you know, body image. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about that and how you're, how you're going through all that? Yeah. So I think, you know, if you'd asked that question this time about like six years ago, I would have told you I felt like a nine or a 10, but I would have felt like a four or five, maybe even a three or a two, to be quite honest. And, um, you know, for me, I, I struggled with balancing eating and exercising. And um, right after my sophomore year, we'd won the national championship. I'd won the tour and, you know, we kind of set the bar of like what as high as you could go both as a team and then myself as an individual. And um, I think that was the summer that I noticed how visible I was becoming and how, you know, I started to see myself in magazines and, you know, and I think subconsciously I tried to make myself appear to look thinner and better because I knew I was going to be in magazines and, and pictures and Instagram and whatever. And so um, I then started to not eat as much in an effort to look a little skinnier, but at the same time, physically as a D1 athlete, like we'd gotten to the national championship, we'd won. I wanted to be able to win it again. And so I tried to push myself physically, like in the, in the gym to, to continue to improve and not, and not settle. That's something, you know, I never wanted to settle my, my parents, you know, never like they tried to instill, like, don't get complacent. Don't like, there's people who want what you have. Yes. Success is awesome. But like, if you stop, people are going to catch up. And that wasn't an effort to try to not make me cocky, which I think, you know, I, I think worked. I don't think I, I don't, wouldn't, I wouldn't say I come off as cocky, I hope, but, um, you know, so I was like battling those two like things in my mind of being super fit and strong enough to play, but at the same time being skinny enough to look good in the magazines and um, to look good to my peers and to little kids and whatnot. And um, so I basically was about under eating, over exercising um, to the point where I'd eat enough to not pass out from the day um, and from my three workouts that I would do. And um, that lasted for about six or seven months until it got to the point where the scale, like the weight scale was going down, but my level of play dropped so much that yeah. I was going to lose what I loved and I was going to lose the ability to contribute to a team, to, to play at the highest level, to win a national championship on top of just like losing my teammates. I was not a great teammate. I was not a great friend. I said it before, like, I honestly think I, part of it was me being hangry. Like I was hungry. <laughs> yeah. Like I, sure. I, I actually think I was hangry, but I also was really defensive because people would start to ask questions and I just didn't want to talk about it. And so it took, to, it took me pretty much honestly losing something that I loved, which was my lacrosse and my team and our successes. I loved that more than I loved myself at that point. And I think it took me almost losing that to kind of like wake me up and realize like I need to find the balance again. And I, and I, you know, I'd struggled with it throughout middle school and even freshman year, I went the opposite direction where the freshman 15 was really real and needed to back up, like needed to actually eat well and balance, you know, yeah. new college life. Um, but, you know, then I went to the other end, which was probably a little scarier and a little, definitely more unhealthy. And so um, now, you know, being six years out of that, I feel like, you know, like a nine or 10, I feel really great about myself. And, um, you know, I don't weigh myself. I don't, you know, count calories. I try to put good things in, but I also, you know, I'll eat, you know, Chinese food or pizza. Like I, I try to find the balance and, um, you know, that's not to say there aren't bad days. There are, but I, I'm really, Aware, like hyper aware of the negativity that sucked me in my junior year. And so anytime that I 
find myself hearing it or saying that to myself, I really try to pull myself out real fast because I know what a, what a tough spiral it can be once you're in it. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's like you said, it's definitely important for younger athletes mm -hmm. now to realize, you know, if, if your dreams are to be playing, you know, division one, division two, whatever college, um, lacrosse, and then beyond, you have to take care of your body. And mm -hmm. it's not just eating. It's not just physical, but you have to take care of your brain. You have to work on that mental aspect of your game. You have to work on, you know, being comfortable with yourself, being confident with yourself, because then that reflects on the field. You know, like you said, you were, you were becoming so engrossed in just the, the lacrosse aspect of things that you forgot that you had a team or, you know, you weren't being so great to them, but that was because like your brain needed nutrients, your body needed nutrients, and you weren't feeding it like you needed to. So I think, you know, that's a great point is is letting kids know you know it's it's a lot there's a lot that goes into being an athlete you know whether it's middle school high school college mm -hmm. um but you have to get if you don't know how to do it you have to talk to someone that knows what they're doing and, and how to help you out exactly and i think the other thing that i struggled with that i know a lot of people struggle with is like in college like being strong is necessary like the level of so high and people are bigger and stronger and faster and so you're lifting a lot and for me as somebody who puts on muscle really fast that was hard for me to compute like okay these this these legs really help me in lacrosse like they make me fast and strong and durable and knock on wood like I haven't gotten seriously hurt because I'm I'm strong but then like going to like dinner or out and you're like those legs don't necessarily look good in the jeans that, you know, everybody else looks good in. So for me, that was like the battle I was fighting. And I know a lot of people fight that as well. And I think, you know, you have to, like my body and our bodies are our vehicles and that's all we have. Like it's, it's the only body we're ever going to get. And so we have to treat it well, both like with what we put into it, but also like how we talk to ourselves and, so I think it's so, like, as I've gotten older, I've realized it's not just physical. And it's not just, you know, what we put inside for our fuel, but it's mental, it's sleep. It's, you know, surrounding yourself with positive people, being in a team culture that's positive. And um, there's so many different, like, elements that, like, if one or two start to go south, it can pull you down quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that was a great point, too, of, of saying, like, you know, I'm super strong on the field or on the court or whatever it is, but then I go out with my friends and I don't feel as, you know, pretty mm -hmm. or as feminine or whatever the case is. But, you know, that's not necessarily your body. It's how you're viewing your body, mm -hmm. right? You yeah. know, because people like, you know, Serena, um, yep. Serena Williams, I mean, like they are powerful and they are strong, but they like, you put them on, you know, Sports Illustrated and they like beautiful, beautiful ladies. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one of those things. It's like you have to kind of take what you have and make it your own and, mm -hmm. and be as confident as you can be with that. And again, if you guys don't have people out there that are helping support you, you know, that's part of Raise Your Game program too, is we can help, you know, with that kind of support yeah. as well. Um, but so just, you know, wrapping things up, Taylor, can you leave everyone with some words of encouragement and kind of what it means to you for that champion mindset and motivation? Yeah, you know, I think being a champion is not even, is very, it's individual to a degree. Um, you know, you have to put in the work, you have to make the sacrifices, you have to, you know, push yourself farther than, you're the only one who determines how hard you push yourself. So you have to be the one driving it, but it's also about the people you surround yourself with. So for individual sport athletes, you know, it's, you're typically still on a team, but if you're not, it's your coaches, it's your family, it's your support system. Are they, are they helping you along the way or are they pulling you back? Or do you have jealous friends who demean your progress or whatnot? And for a team, it's the same thing. Like you, to be a champion, like I need not, especially in a team sport, like I need to show up and be the best I can be but I also need to push my teammates so that we can elevate our level as a group. But also like if somebody falls below that standard, we have to be able to push them back up. And, um, you know, the best teams I've been on are the teams that 
all have that championship mindset as individuals, but when they come together, they are so much better than they were as, as separate. And that comes from trust. It comes from trusting your teammates, trusting the process, trusting your coaches, um, and being willing to, to put yourself out there and take risks. Uh, yeah. The best teams I've played on were the ones who made a ton of mistakes and didn't yell at each other for the mistakes, but said, we got your back next time. And those mistakes ended up propelling us to, to big, big wins. That's awesome. Yeah. And just holding each other accountable and being mm -hmm. like, Hey, I need you to help me and I'll be here to help you. And yeah. that's how we're going to grow. So awesome. Taylor. Well, will you tell everyone that's watching and listening uh, how to get a hold of you and how to follow you along, along your life? <laughs> so um, my Instagram is Taylor Cummings underscore. Um, I have a site, taylorcummingslacrosse.com for any clinics and um, virtual training. Um, there's not much on there right now, but hopefully soon we'll, we'll be back up. And um, yeah, that's how you can contact me. I also have YouTube if you want to watch any kind of tutorials and work on getting, getting better by yourself. Yeah, or if you want to watch Taylor try some different foods she hasn't tried yeah. before, and like sour faces. <laughs> oh God, yeah, that was. I'm not an event. Like I'm, I've gotten a lot better, but random foods in different languages, I was a little skeptical. <laughs> but it didn't turn out so bad. No, it was good. It was a good one. But all right, Taylor. Well, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. And um, best of luck to you with everything coming up for the the World Cup and hopefully WPLL soon too. Yep. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. You too.